Okay, this video is going to deal with several extensions and applications of the Pythagorean Theorem. And one that I'd like to start off with is how to find distance between points on a graph, on an XY grid like this. One place, by the way, where XY grids occur is on a television screen or a computer screen, and you're trying to um, uh, plot graphics and so forth. If you have a program that plots the graphs, it identifies the points by numbers, how far over and how far up from some coordinate system like this. And one of the things you might want to know is how far is it between two points. Um, there's a lot of applications of this, but let's just see in general how would we find that distance. Well, first let's draw that distance in. And if you look at it a little bit, it looks like we have a triangle here. If I go along the coordinate grid, it looks like we have a horizontal and a vertical line connecting this to make a right triangle. And the distance we're looking for is the hypotenuse. So if we could find the horizontal distance between these points and the vertical distance between these points, we could take those numbers, square them, add them together, and take the square root, and we got the distance. Okay. Well, first let's identify the points by their numbers. Notice this one is over 2 and up 3. So I write 2, 3. This one is over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is 7, 5. All right? Now, we could just look at the graph and say, oh, from here we have to step over here one, two, three, four, five squares, and up two. But uh, what if these were decimal numbers and so forth? Sometimes we don't want to simply count squares on a graph. We want to compute the distance based on these coordinate numbers themselves. And so let's see what these numbers mean. First of all, notice that this first number, the two, is how far over, horizontally, this point is. So to get to this point, we go over 2 and up 3. This point, this number 7, is how far horizontally we have to go to get to this distance over here. And so if I want to find the horizontal distance between the points, it's like taking 7 minus 2, and that gives me 5. Okay, so I take the difference, so I take 7 minus 2, and that's going to give me the horizontal distance. Notice the same thing applies vertically. The 3 here is how far up I have to go uh, from the x-axis to get up to this level. And 5 is how far I have to go up from the x-axis to get to this level. And so how far different are they? How far apart are they vertically? Well, I take 5 minus 3 and that gives us 2. So I take the 7 minus 2, and then I take my 5 minus 3. If I square each of these, and add them together, and take the square root, that's going to give me the distance between the points. Okay, so the way we write this, there's a abbreviation we sometimes use. The difference in the x values, we sometimes write as simply delta x. That's the Greek letter for delta, and it has a D sound in Greek, and so it stands for the difference of the x values. This x value is 7, this one is 2, so delta x, or the difference of the x's, is 5. Take delta x and square it. Then I take delta y. This y value is 5, this one is 3. The difference of the y values is 2. So I take my delta y and square it add them together and take the square root. And this is the distance formula for a two-dimensional surface. Okay, well, let's just go ahead and finish it out. If I do it from the numbers or if I do it from counting squares, either one, 7 minus 2 is 5, squared is 25, 5 minus 3 is 2, squared is 4, add them together I get 29, and so the distance between the points is the square root of 29. At this stage, we're just going to use a calculator. Okay, and so if I just take 29 and hit the square root, 
by the way, for the rest of this, um, the exercises uh, in this uh, unit, uh, we'll go ahead and use a calculator. Uh, unless we're specifically practicing the square root technique that, from the last video, okay? And so there you go, uh, 5.38, or you might round it up to 5.39. Okay, that's the distance formula in two dimensions. Let's see how we can generalize what we know about the Pythagorean theorem to finding a distance across space, so a diagonal uh, across a three-dimensional object. Look, at, look around yourself at the room you're sitting in, assuming you're in a standard sort of box-like room, and imagine wanting to know the distance from the top corner where one of the walls meets the ceiling, and the bottom corner here where the opposite wall, or the opposite uh, vertical line like this, meets the floor. And we want to take, uh, let's use a different color here, we want to find this distance. Okay, so if you look around physically in the room you're sitting in and try to uh, imagine in your circumstance what I'm trying to draw here, that'll make it more real to you. So if I have a two-dimensional situation, I could find the diagonal of a rectangle and uh, by finding um, the hypotenuse of a right triangle. Notice that if I split a rectangle like this, I have a right triangle whose legs are simply L and W, the length and the width of the rectangle. Okay, so in this case, the distance here is simply the square root of the sum of the squares of the two legs, L squared plus W squared. If I had numbers, I would square them, add them together, and take the square root, as we've been doing before. Now, what do we do for a three-dimensional situation? Well, we have to build somehow on what we already know. We can't just jump to conclusions here. Okay, so let's go back and see, is this distance we're looking for part of a right triangle whose uh, legs we can find? All right? And notice that if I go this length along, think of that as the hypotenuse of a triangle, and think of the, the height along this edge here as one leg, then the distance across the floor would be the other leg. So look at this red triangle here. That's uh, simply a right triangle, and that has two legs. If I could find both legs, this one I know is H, if I can find this length, I can then uh, put them together and find uh, this distance d that I'm looking for here. Okay, well we're going to have to somehow figure out this distance across the floor. And if you look at it, isn't that a lot like finding the distance across a rectangle? Because the floor itself looks like a rectangle laid down flat. And so if I think of this triangle, let's make that green, and in fact, um, let's just shade it in. This triangle here, the legs of the triangle are L and W, just like they were here. So the distance across the floor, let's call that distance X, as this uh, becomes a leg of the vertical uh, triangle. So we have a two-step process. Start with L and W, and I can say X is equal to the square root of L squared plus W squared. This is good. We'll just use green to refer to this triangle. And um, uh, what we're then going to want to do is find, use that x as a leg of the red triangle. So let's switch to red now. And for this red triangle, we want uh, d, which is the hypotenuse, is the square root of x squared plus h squared. Okay, so what is x squared? Well, here is x. If I take x squared, that's going to be, uh, if I take the square root of something and I turn around and square it, it's like undoing the square root. So that's simply L squared plus W squared. And so I can substitute this 
for my x squared. Let's see what we get. d equals the square root of x squared, which is this, plus h squared. Now that is rather remarkable. Look what we have. We have a new formula that looks a lot like the Pythagorean theorem. The diagonal across a rectangle in two dimensions is simply the square root of L squared plus W squared. The diagonal three-dimensionally across a three-dimensional room is the square root of L squared plus W squared plus H squared. So it's like an extension. Okay, So if we have a, uh, say a rectangle like this, and if the width in this direction is, say, 3, and the distance in this way is 5, and the distance this way is 2, let's pull up a calculator, and we can just do it all right here. I take 3 squared, so I take 3 squared, plus 5 squared, 5 squared, let's say equals, plus 2 squared equals 38, and then take the square root. So I take the length, the width, and the height, square each of them, add them together, and take the square root. So the diagonal here is going to be 6.16 in whatever units we're measuring in. If these are feet, that will be 6.16 feet. Okay? So this is a useful extension of the Pythagorean theorem. We now have something that looks a lot like the Pythagorean theorem, but it's a, a three-dimensional version. Okay. In Algebra 1, uh, you learned how to find equations of lines, and that's about as far as you got. You really didn't find equations of lots of different things on the plane. But from what we've learned so far, it's very easy to find the equation of a circle. So here's a grid. And here's a circle whose radius is 4. So let's say radius equals 4. And so the question is, can I find an equation that describes this circle? And it's remarkably simple to do that. Let's see what we're talking about. Pick any point on the circle. Label it x, y. Okay. In fact, x, y could stand for any point in the plane. But I want to say... What is the condition so that the xy point that I picked is actually on the circle? And so you have to say, what do you mean when you talk about a circle? If I drew a circle with a compass, I'd put the point of the compass here and then stretch it out to a certain distance as a radius and then swing it around. What I'm physically doing with the compass is locating on the plane all the points that are a given distance this radius, from this point. So I'm saying this distance is going to be my radius, and any point on the plane that is this distance from the center point is going to be on the circle. Well, let's try it. Look at this. Hmm, that's a diagonal line. And notice if I drop a perpendicular here and go over there, I have a right triangle. And in fact, the xy point here tells how far over and how far up I have to go to get from the origin up to here. So this side of the triangle is actually x, and this side of the triangle is actually y. And then I can write down the relation among these three variables by noticing x and y are the legs of a right triangle, and r is the hypotenuse. So r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. And in fact, what we have here is an equation that describes the circle. Any point for which the x and y coordinates of the point satisfy this relationship will be on the circle. Okay, let's try out this equation of a circle in GeoGebra. So down here I'm going to input x squared plus y squared equals, and then it's going to be r squared. So let's pick a radius. 
What if I wanted this circle to have a radius of 2? So I want it to be this big, okay? Well, uh, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, so I'm going to type 2 squared or simply 4. And let's see what we get. There we are. We have a circle of the given radius. And notice over here in the algebra view, that's why they call it GeoGebra, it's algebra and geometry combined. It says x squared plus y squared equals 4, and that's the equation for this circle. If I turn off this circle, it disappears, right? You can click this little um, ball out in front of the C, and so there you have it, okay? If I change this to be x squared plus y squared equals, and some other amount, like let's say 1, which is 1 squared, we expect to get a circle that's in here. And sure enough, what if I want to, for equation with radius of 3, then I'm going to say x squared plus y squared equals, uh, I remember I have to say 3 squared, so it would be 9. And there we go. So you can make a target. So when we specify these things algebraically, we now know how to specify a circle. What if using GeoGebra, I simply put this uh, uh, center point here and then pull it out and go out to, say, the 4. Okay, this time I specified the circle geometrically by using the geometry tools here. But look what it put over here on the algebra view of the program. It says x squared plus y squared equals 16. So we didn't enter the equation. It used the equation to actually uh, compute the circle and figure out which pixels on the screen it's going to turn blue here or whatever this color is. And it's going to be determined by x squared plus y squared equals r squared, where r is 4. Okay? So in the background, uh, programs like Photoshop and other kinds of uh, graphic manipulation programs are doing this kind of thing all the time. And if you're a, a graphic artist or, a, say, a, a commercial artist or so forth, you, would, you need to have some appreciation for what's going on behind the scenes to be able to use the tools well. A lot of times you don't have to use the algebra directly but uh, somebody's doing that, and those people, I'm sure, are getting paid very well. Okay, there you have it. Uh, equations not only of straight lines, but we've moved on to equations of other objects. In this case, circles, because circles are defined in terms of the distance from a center point out to the circle. And we know how to find distances between points on the plane. So we found uh, three different extensions, or if you want to call them applications, of the Pythagorean Theorem. Here we have the distance formula. We have an extension of the Pythagorean Theorem into three dimensions. And now we found how to use distance as a way of defining um, curves that we can put on graphs, in this case a circle. Okay.